So the next important thing that we have intuition about, because you get this intuition very quickly if you do computer experiments with known unstable systems, systems which are locally and replace unstable. And also you get this experience if you do anything in statistical mechanics. But the theory here is more general. Uh, it will not only derive equilibrium statistical mechanics, but also describes far from equilibrium mechanics where you're driving the system, you don't let it settle down. And the key notion is notion of invariant measure. If you do any numerical <coughs> experiment with, let's say, a known attractor, a two-dimensional system I gave you to play with, you'll just get it because you'll run a computer for a while and you'll discover it doesn't matter where you're running it, 100,000 or million times you'll see the same density. You'll, you know, any coarse graining, no matter how refined, will give you the same density function. So invariant measure is the obvious thing. It says that density at times t is the same as it always was. So you can even drop time and just call it some function defined on the space. It'll turn out that Perron Frobenius operator is a really useful way to think about it. That's why we introduced it. So what does Perron Frobenius says? It says if I act and now you know this is an operator. Now again, operators are not very fancy things. It just means there's some derivatives. I'll make it very explicit. Uh, but if you don't like it, you can always coarse grain, and in that case, operator is a matrix that maps volumes and volumes in core grazing. So this is something that does to the density. And what it does, it's an integral over all initial conditions. Uh, that's our definition of what Perron Frobenius operator does by definition. And if the measure is invariant, we find out that this integration of our whole state space, all it does is it rearranges the points around. At a given time, there's a volume and you know, things get rearranged. But their local density doesn't change any place. But if you think of this as an operator, this is an operator that has a fixed point with eigenvalue 1. So rho x is a fixed point in function space, rows, with eigenvalue 1. You know, we've done things like this before, but they accepted and just on faith. This is called unitary operator. This is called amplitude, so it's a complex function than real. And you know, you knew that when you looked at the unitary evolution, you could express it in terms of eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian, et cetera. And so you've done this before, but now uh, it's done on space of functions. And the problem is now recast from the original problem of evolution on the space into problem of evolution of the densities and particularly interesting density will be the one that doesn't change in time. Just like whenever we had dynamics in finite dimensional space, the particular interesting solutions were equilibria, things that didn't change in time. So do such things exist? We have experience of them because the moment you start playing with nonlinear dynamics numerically on computers, you will always find this. You will find uh, natural measures, uh, the limit one particular kind of invariant measure. So here is an example. Uh, if I define rho of x, I define the d mu of x to be delta function of x minus x q, where q is an equilibrium, meaning that my dynamics doesn't move it around. Then, I stick it in here, I integrate two delta functions, I get a delta function back, and that's it. You know, nothing, nothing happens, that's a solution. It just says that if I make a singular measure, so if I make a measure where all my measure is constant at one point in the space and that point doesn't move, then that measure will not move. Once you understand this, you realize you can do the same thing with 
any sum of any periodic orbits. And, you know, in any invariant, time invariant set, it doesn't have to be a point. So, if my point is chosen, if I take a thing that in time does that, so I have a periodic orbit, then under time evolution, what will happen, it won't go any place, it'll just rearrange itself. So that'll be an example of invariant measure. So it's very easy to produce infinitely many invariant measures, and they have just one catch, they require infinite precision. The moment you replace this invariant measure by a neighborhood, we know this won't work anymore because the neighbors are going away, coming closer. We know the density is changing because they always study stabilities of neighborhoods. So the singular measures are no good. Are not physical, you know, overabused word, but whatever. Meaning there are these mathematical solutions, but they're not the solutions we care about.